If you work for an airline, I hate you. Okay, I hate you. And I don't want to hear, no, my cousin Sheila's a real sweetheart. She works for Southwest. Fuck your cousin Sheila. <laughs> All right, your cousin Sheila's a goddamn bitch and I'll tell you something else. <laughs> the only reason people work for airlines is because the Nazi party is no longer hiring. <laughs> I don't have an issue, thank you. I don't have an issue with flying. My issue is with the boarding of the plane. Has anyone else here ever had the misfortune of being stuck in boarding zone four? <laughs> like that's when you have a seat, you have a ticket because you're holding it, but you're so low on the food chain, it pretty much goes like first class, luggage, terrorist, maybe you. <laughs> and they take such painstaking care to board zones one through three. And if you don't fly that airline often enough, you are SOL in terms of getting on that plane because they are boarding groups of people that you didn't even know you could apply to be part of. <laughs> We're gonna start boarding flight 556 at Dallas-Fort Worth. We're gonna start boarding zone one. These are our first class passengers, our first members, our gold members, our golden shower members. There you go. <laughs> our golden eagle members, our eagle face members. If you have an eagle face instead of a person face because you lost your face <laughs> in some sort of horrible holiday turkey deep fry accident, you didn't have enough butt fat to get a nose grafted onto your face, so you had to borrow one from an eagle, so now you have a beak and you like to eat mice. You can get on the plane. Boarding zone two. These are our silver members, our silver star members, our silver surfer members. Anybody likes comic books? You're a fucking nerd. You can sit in the back of the plane. Silver hair, if you're old, hurry the fuck up. Silver spoons, if you like Ricky Schroeder, 80s TV shows, you were born really well, then you can get on the plane. Silver bullet summer, no ma'am, you cannot bring your cores light up in this bitch. Boarding zone three. These are our... These are our copper members, our copper star members, our copper topper members, anybody using a Duracell operative device. I don't give a shit if it's a pacemaker. You turn that off for takeoff. Copper head, if you have a copper head snake as a pet, instead of a normal goddamn pet like a dog or a cat, you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna get me a snake. Yeah, fuck you, dad, I'm not going to law school. I'm gonna go to art school online and learn how to draw dragons and manage a hot topic in my spare time. I love my snake. I'm bringing her to Thanksgiving. Her name is Judy, wearing snake love. I love her so much, don't touch me, mom. You can get on the plane and boarding's on four. You can go fuck yourself. You ever been on a flight and you catch yourself watching somebody else's movie for way too long? I'm watching Frozen with no sound for 40 minutes. It's in front of my own headrest, but I'm like, I like this version. I'm already emotionally invested. I hate flying Southwest the most, just because they're like the funny airline. Everybody who works there thinks they're a stand-up comedian which is aggravating as a stand-up comedian, how easy the crowd is on a plane. It's very hard to do this for a living, but on a Southwest flight, people just fucking give it up for anything. They'll be like, at this time, we're gonna turn off all iPhones, Blackberries, and Blueberries, and people are like, oh, that's not a real phone model. It's a fruit. Richard Pryor up there. <laughs> Why are you a flight attendant? <laughs> Follow your dreams. <laughs> I always see families traveling together at the airport and like parents will have their little kids pulling these tiny Spider-Man suitcases <laughs> that are like this big. Just pack for your kid. <laughs> Why does a toddler need his own suitcase? I just picture this little kid waking up in the morning in his race car bed, like, no, no, I overslept my flight to LaGuardia. <laughs> Let's see, I'll eat my Ninja Turtles, a scoop of ice cream, it's a long flight, I might get hungry. Tell the shuttle to wait for me. Tell the shuttle to wait. I just flew in a couple days ago. I'm a good flyer, doesn't bother me, I'm not scared to fly, nothing. But this, every, this happens every once in a while. You know when you're on a flight, they shut the door, no one else is getting on and you realize there's an empty seat in your row. <sighs> that's the best moment in the world, are you kidding me? <laughs> empty seat, that's like first class for white trash. Do you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh my God, empty seat, so exciting, all right? This is what happened to me on the way down. I'm sitting at the window, there's a gentleman beside me, and his, the, the, the empty seat is the aisle seat, okay? So I give him the celebration elbow. I give him one of these, I'm like, red right on, yeah. I'm excited. I expect him to celebrate with me, but he looks at me in the face and he's like, actually, I prefer the middle seat. And I was like, what, what did you just say? I'm sorry. 
did you just tell me you're an asshole? Is that what you said? Because your accent is very strong. What? Are you kidding? You prefer the middle seat? Let me tell you, I ruined his flight. I ruined his flight. Are you kidding? He was trying to sleep. I kept touching his face. Do you know what I mean? I'm all... <laughs> he woke up with a different part in his hair. That'll teach him. That'll teach him. It's your job, everyone, to teach people manners. Um, I also, I have to fly quite a bit, and this happens. This happens. Have you ever had to been on one of those little tiny small planes? One of those little passenger planes? Where there's only like seven people on the plane. I had to take one a little while ago. And the airline that I was flying on was called Bearskin Airlines, which at first I was like, oh, sexy. Uh, but it's not, it's not sexy. I thought it was gonna be big shirtless hairy guys bring me drinks. No, just terrifying, that's it. And here's something you need to remember in your travels, everybody. If you ever get onto the stairs of your aircraft and the whole fucking plane moves, no, not a good idea, yeah. I got on the stairs and the, it tipped on me. I'm like, Dan, Dan. Ah! I don't want it to seem like I'm complaining because I'm so grateful. You know, tour has been amazing. You know, great people, mediocre money, but it's good. It's good. But the tour, the travel is just beyond me. I, I, I have a Jewish body. And you'll only know what that means if you have one. And we don't travel well. So flying has been really hard for me and I pretty much have exclusively flown Delta. And, it's like fine. It's like the best of the worst. It's always something. I don't know, is it just me? Or is it any time you get on a plane now as an adult, like, we're gonna die? <laughs> I don't remember feeling so afraid as a kid. Maybe it's like, now as an adult, I have more to lose. Like, I don't wanna die now. I'm fucking rich and famous. <laughs> but like, as a kid, who would miss me? You know, Ms. Goldberg, no. <laughs> but it's always something, you know? I got a million stories, ugh. These walls could talk. <laughs> They'd tell you about the time I was flying to Kansas City. <laughs> I just flew to Kansas City actually like a month ago. Nice city, sort of. <laughs> no, it was nice, it was nice. And you know, I'm flying out of LaGuardia, just sitting on the tarmac for an hour, nobody says anything. It was so frustrating. Flying Delta, delayed an hour, no word from the pilots. They're very non-communicative. I'm sure their wives are thrilled. <laughs> sitting there. Someone actually once told me Delta is secretly an acronym for don't ever leave the airport. I really felt that, you know? <laughs> no word from the pilot. Finally, about an hour later, the pilot comes on and he's like, hey, and I'm like, Pete? <laughs> Is that you, honey? <laughs> he comes on, he's like, we're really sorry about the delay. We're like about to take off. There's just 17 planes taxiing in front of us. And I'm like, okay, but that sounds like a lot. I knew we were gonna be there for another 45 minutes. I got like my magazines out, I took my shoes off, not my socks, I'm not disgusting. <laughs> and I'm just chilling, and maybe 10 seconds after the announcement, we're in the air. <laughs> it was weird. Normally I would just be excited to be like on my way, but something about this whole situation smelled kind of fishy. It was definitely giving me like a hijack vibe, you know? <laughs> because not only were we taking off prematurely, like it was bad. And I know I'm a brain dead moron and I can't comment on what a pilot does, but it was not good. <laughs> Felt like Stevie Wonder was taking us off, okay? <laughs> and so I was freaking out, but then I was also a little nervous because when they were making the announcement, I remember this like super cute, borderline geriatric man had gotten up and went to the bathroom. <laughs> and he hadn't come back yet. <laughs> so we're in this treacherous takeoff and all I can think about is the man with his penis out in the bathroom bopping around in there like it's the fucking cockpit. <laughs> And it was just so scary, but I've become such a nervous flyer. So what I've started to do is I'll actually do, it's actually a really good trick. Feel free to take this with you when you go. I'll scan the plane. I'll look at everyone's faces <laughs> and I'll read their facial reactions. And if nobody else looks really concerned, it really calms me down. It's like a herd mentality thing. So I look around the plane. People are freaking out. <laughs> You know you're fucked when people start taking out rosary beads on a plane. <laughs> so not only am I freaking out, I'm also feeling a little left out because I'm Jewish, we don't get little knickknacks like that, you know? <laughs> Gentiles got their tchotchkes, their beads, their books, their dance. <laughs> we got nothing. I literally turned to the lady next to me, she had this like very cute pink Bible and I'm like, Hey, bitch, is that the Old Testament? <laughs> if so, 
may I borrow it? <laughs> Technically, you guys are borrowing it from us, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs>